So I woke up outside my house the other day with a load of whiskey on one side, a trunk full of bananas on the other, the fat controller's wife in my cab, and I thought to myself, you know what, I should talk about Star Wars, but how to do it in a way that's unique, interesting, and clever. That's easy! By ripping off, I mean doing an homage to one of my favourite YouTubers, The Critical Drinker, or as I like to call him, the best thing to come out of Scotland since Sean Connery. Ah, oh, Sean, you deserve such a better end to your career, mate. Anyway, it's no secret Star Wars has become a divisive franchise in recent years, mostly due to the sequel trilogy, and there are more than a few videos that have been badmouthing them, many of which I've watched. In doing so, I've discovered two things. First, exposure to so much negativity is really bad for the soul, and second, there's a surprisingly common theme running through most of them. Many of these videos bemoan a lack of consistency with the Disney films in terms of story, writing, characterization, production, direction, well, everything really. It was then that it hit me like a truck to the head. Inconsistency is nothing new to Star Wars. That's what this editorial will be about. So grab yourself an alcoholic beverage or five as we delve into the inconsistencies of Star Wars. We'll start with the prequel trilogy. If you've been a long-time viewer of this channel, you'll know I actually like these films. But Victor, you heavily intoxicated hyper specimen, how can you like these films when they're absolute rubbish? Well, my inevitable prequel hater, I find them entertaining, but I'm not blind to their flaws. And of course, you can't talk about flaws without mentioning Jar Jar Binks. Now, it's clear from behind the scenes footage George Lucas intended for Jar Jar to be a major player in this trilogy. This brings us along to the Darth Jar Jar theory, the idea that Clumsy Gungan was secretly a Sith. There's a lot of evidence to support this, and I think it could have worked if Jar Jar wasn't, well, Jar Jar. This is where I have to give Lucas a lot of credit. He likely took note of the backlash and knew it wasn't going to work, so he had to reorganize his plans. This is probably how we ended up with Count Dooku, which was a superior choice. After all, it's been scientifically proven having Sir Christopher Lee in your movie increases the quality by a hundred thousand infinity fold. Rest in peace, you titan of cinema. And that's all I have to say there. The rest of these films run pretty well and have given the internet ample meme material. Let's move on to the original trilogy, which I regard as significantly more problematic. But Victor, you 12-pack sporting massive manliness, how can you badmouth the original trilogy when they're timeless classics? Well, my nostalgic crusader, like the prequels, they're good movies, but not perfect. And I think their problems start in Obi-Wan's house after he saved Luke from the Sand People, where he reveals Darth Vader was his apprentice and that he betrayed and murdered Anakin Skywalker. I think at the time, as far as Lucas was concerned, that was it, and Luke's father was never meant to be, spoiler alert, Vader himself. And you can sort of see this in Empire Strikes Back. Alright, before I go any further, I should make one thing clear. Everything I've said and have yet to say about Star Wars is based on events in the movies themselves. I'm not including anything from Legends or other external material, mainly because I don't know a great deal about either. So if there is some sort of explanation, please sound off down below. Okay, Empire Strikes Back is a powerful movie and gave us one of the most iconic moments in film history. I would like to point out how interesting this moment is. If you try doing that sort of thing nowadays, you get called out for lazy writing. Look, subtlety isn't my strength, but at no time during Empire or A New Hope was there any foreshadowing Vader was Luke's father. And there might be a reason for that. I remember watching an interview with James Earl Jones, who provided Vader's iconic vocals. From the sound of it, Vader became Luke's father during dubbing, and the original line as it appeared in the script and was spoken on set was, no, Luke, Obi-Wan killed your father. If this is true, I think they should have stuck with it. It would have exposed Obi-Wan's story as a lie, complicating his relationship with Luke. Maybe then the old Jedi would have confessed he was ashamed by what he had done, that this act disillusioned Vader and turned him to the dark side, thus leading the galaxy to its present state. And I'm sorry, that whole from a certain point of view thing in Return of the Jedi is just plain nonsense, much like the reveal Leia is Luke's sister. I really have no idea why they decided to go with this. Did the writers just forget about this from Empire? But Victor! <laughs> Stop interrupting! I'm aware Leia did this to make Han jealous. I also agree if they were separated at birth by half a galaxy, they wouldn't and couldn't have known they were related. I just think if the Ryers knew from the start Luke and Leia were siblings, they wouldn't have included either the kiss or the reveal. Maybe they would have just done one or the other. I mean, are we expected to believe Star Wars tried to make incest trendy long before Game of Thrones did? Now we come to the sequel trilogy. I'll be as brief as I can about these films. Force Awakens, I actually liked. It was mostly a remake of A New Hope, but I think there were enough additional elements that made it unique. 
I also found Starkiller Base quite intimidating as it achieved what the first two Death Stars never did. It destroyed more than one planet, and something that did genuinely surprise me was, spoiler alert, Han Solo dying. I really didn't see that coming, and with all the leaks these movies have experienced, it's amazing that didn't come out. The Last Jedi I did enjoy at the time. This is easily my most favorite shot in all of Star Wars. Another thing I really liked was making Rey's parents nobodies. However, the more I thought about this film, the more I realized how many problems it was going to cause. Which brings us along to Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, I didn't really like this one. It felt like too much of a course correct. And bringing back Palpatine? I'll never buy that was always the plan. I won't go any further with criticism as I'd just be being a dead horse. But before I end this editorial, I do want to say something. At the time of this video, there are growing rumors Disney is planning to wipe the sequel trilogy from canon. Personally, I don't think they should, as it would just be a giant middle finger to those who worked on them. That's something often overlooked about films, TV shows, comics, etc. Regardless of the final product, a lot of people worked very hard to make them a reality, and to brush aside all this effort just because it was unpopular just isn't right. I really think the best thing for all involved is to accept these movies happened and move on. Disney, learn from your mistakes and do better next time. Fans, don't live your lives by these films. As unpopular as this opinion is, they're just movies. Anyway, that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you for 37,000 subscribers. Now bugger off!